Hello, it's Michael Kölling again. Welcome back to our Java Programming with Greenfoot series. Now that you have hopefully managed to download and install Greenfoot, we are ready to get started and actually program something. So the example that I have uh, picked that I want to program with you is uh, very topical in this moment in time. Um, it is a model, a simulation of how a virus spreads among a population so that we can see um, maybe have a simulation that shows us um, how different behavior of people um, can influence the spread of a virus in a population. So that's our um, goal. That is why I named the example contagion already because it is an investigation of contagious um, spread of a virus um, and that is what we'll do now. So Let's get started and actually write some code. Okay, this is where we left off um, last time, where we had the green foot window open here with this large white area in the center of the screen, which is what we call the world, because this is where our program will execute and where our actors will run around. We have on the right here in Greenfoot always the world and the actor superclasses. They are built in. We will in explore them in more detail later. And there is a subclass called my world by default, which is the actual world that we're dealing with here. In Greenfoot, when we program, the first thing you do is always you create a subclass of actor, and that is a concrete actor that does something in your program. So I right click on the actor class, and I have two options here. One of them is to create a new subclass. So I'm going to do that. And this dialog pops up that asks me to do two things. It asks me to give my class a name and select an image for it. I want to create a person because for my contagion scenario, I want people to walk around and see what happens when the infection spreads. Um, I leave the language that we're programming as Java. And then I select an image for the person. Here is an image library. You will see that you can select here different categories. Um, there are people here. And there are three images here that look fairly good for me. That is the these these symbols of people, blue, green, and orange. And um, having two, uh, three different colors is good because then I can indicate different states where a person could be healthy, could be infected, or could be immune. Um, in this case, I have cheated a bit. Um, I have um, already, before I started this recording, taken these images, and I have scaled them down a bit. I have here already those three images and I've just made them smaller so I've taken them I, I had first selected them uh, for my classes but then I have opened the image in a graphics program and just reduced the size to half the size so let's say I have the select blue as the normal one um, and then I click OK so now I have a name and an image selected and when I click OK I get here the class person as the subclass of actor. As soon as you have a person in Greenfoot, you can right click on it and you have a number of options here. The first one is the constructor. You can interactively invoke the constructor of your class because this person is a Java class. So um, this class has a valid compilable skeleton. So this is already compiled. I can invoke the constructor and when I do that, I, cr I get a person object and I can put this person object here into the world. Try that again. And try that again so you can create as many people in your world as you like. You can then try to run the program and that does nothing because we haven't written any code yet. So the person class um, has in fact no code in it that tells it what to do when we run our program. We can investigate the code skeleton for the person by either double clicking or just right clicking and select open editor. This should open the editor for my class. And what we see is that here um, my um, class has um, a little bit of code in here already. There is an import statement that we just leave untouched. There is a comment where I can write um, uh, what this Where this, what this class is for. So I write something in here. I fill this in and 
it is always good to write comments as we go along. So it says that I have class person, which is a subclass of actor. Um, and then here is a method definition, or a method stub rather. A method stub is a method that doesn't actually have any code in there. There's only one comment here that tells me that is where I can write code. Um, the act method is what makes my um, my actor actually do something. So if I write, for example, move four, um, this will move this um, person four pixels forward in every act step. So if I now go back here and I create a person again, if I click the act button, this act button calls the act method in the actor. And if you look very carefully, you will see that every time I click act, that person actually moves just a little bit to the side. And in fact, if I have multiple objects in my world, then the act button will call the act method on each of the actors in the world. So if I click act, see they all move a little bit forward. And then the run button is just a loop around act. So it just calls act for all actors over and over again. I do that, then they all move to the right. Um, they get stuck at the edge of the world because actors in Greenfoot cannot leave the world. Um, you can, when you've paused your simulation, drag them back if you want to and make them run again. But this is how you program in Greenfoot. Essentially, the Greenfoot framework will, when you click run, call the act method of all actors over and over again. And here you just program the action that you want every actor to take. So if we um, try out what else we can do, instead of writing move, we can say turn four, and we compile this. And if I now create a person and I run this, you see that that actor turns. Um, by the way, if you have a class selected here, shift clicking into the world is a shortcut for creating actors more quickly. If you shift click into the world, you are creating objects of the class that is selected over here on the right. Um, and if I run it now, all the actors are turning. I can also here, of course, since this is standard Java code, I can turn and move both. And the parameter is um, somewhat arbitrary. Um, the four in the turn, um, in the turn method is the angle out of 360 degrees that you want to turn at every step, um, at every act step. And the, the parameter in the move method is how far you want to move forward at every act step. So if I turn and move, you can try to predict what happens. Um, if I do that now, you will see that that actor is now running in a circle. And if I have more of these actors, um, they will all run in a circle. So um, the question is now for you, um, how do you find out what the methods are that you have available here in your act method? Um, because the turn and move method you know about only because I just told you that you can write those. Um, these methods, turn and move and several others you have available, are inherited from the actor class. So um, you have all the methods available that the actor class provides. Um, so there's no magic here, they are just inherited from the superclass. So to find out what we can actually do, we can just look at the superclass. The actor class is here, we can double click, click the actor class and then the actor class opens. Because I can't edit the actor class, it opens by default um, in uh, the Java doc view, so in the documentation view. And so you can here get an overview of all the things you can do. You can get the actor's image, you can see whether it intersects with other objects, you can get its neighbors and so on. You can get the rotation, you can get a um, number of, of data points information, the x and y coordinates and so on. You can check whether you're at the edge of the world. Here is the move method that we've just used, move with a distance parameter. It says moves this actor the specified distance in the direction it's currently facing. And of course we have seen that the, uh, it faces right initially and then using the turn method we can make it turn. We can also use set rotation which sets it to a fix, fixed rotation. Um, for example, I can set it to 90 degrees or 180 or I can set the location. This is a 
absolute movement. So I can set it just to these coordinates, whereas move is a relative movement. I just move relative to the position I am on. Um, so using these methods, you can program the behavior of your actors in the world. Um, try that out for a little bit. Create maybe one or two other actors, put them in the world and see what you can do with it. That is um, the first introduction to the very basic programming with Greenfoot. Okay, that was it for this episode. I suggest that you don't just watch the video, um, play along. So have Greenfoot open while you watch this, um, type what I show you and then uh, try some variations, try some extensions, you will have your own ideas. Um, the important thing to learn to program is to really program. So that is, you, you will not learn to program or do a proper revision of programming principles by just listening to me talk. Type it in, try it out, modify it, extend it, um, and in the next episode we can continue together. That's it for now, see you next time.